Hi everyone, I'm Ashley and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking this old table that I bought from Facebook Marketplace for $75. My threshold is usually $50 max that I'll spend on old furniture because I'm trying to make a profit when I flip it. However, this table was so cool that I bumped it up because I had a special design in mind for it. I was going for that restoration hardware look and I think I got it. If you know what I'm talking about, Restoration Hardware Wood has that gray, brown, kind of rustic tone look to wood. I have it a lot in my own house. I love it so much. And I think I got it on this table. Let me know if you agree with me in the comments and let me show you how I did it. If you've been watching any of my previous videos, you know that I start almost every project by grabbing my carbide scraper. It helps remove the old finish so much faster and less messier in my opinion than a chemical stripper does. I also like to start with it because it actually saves a lot of money on having to use so many sanding pads. This just speeds up the process and saves me money. After I scraped off most of the finish, I grabbed my crud cutter and cleaned the entire table, which included the tabletop, the base, and the leaf that you see in the back there. After letting it dry, I went straight to sanding. I used my 3x4 Electric Ray Surf Prep Sander with 220 grit sandpaper on the tabletop. The whole table is solid wood, but some furniture makers use veneer as a decorative accent, so you just have to be careful that you don't sand through that veneer, which is why I rarely go below 220 grit sandpaper when working with any type of veneer that I want to leave natural wood. Now this table took a very long time to sand. All in all, it took me about five hours to completely sand the tabletop, the base, and that table leaf. To help sand those curved edges, I just used a sand foam pad that is also sold by Surf Prep Sanding. And actually one of the reasons why I bought the Surf Prep Sander in the first place, it helps get into those details a little easier. When sanding the base, I first grabbed my carbide scraper to help speed up that sanding process again, but it just wasn't easy to use on this. So I opted to grab a hundred grit sandpaper because it's solid wood with no veneer, meaning I can speed up that process of sanding it with a lower grit because I won't risk burning through any type of veneer. Afterwards, I had a lot of areas that I had to hand sand. This was the part that took the longest and to be honest, my least favorite part, but it has to be done. So I just used some old sandpaper, folded it in half and sanded until that finish was gone. If you like hand sanding, let me know in the comments because it is the worst part of every project that I work on. <laughs> And finally, I flipped the tabletop over and sanded off most of the old finish that was on there as well. Now there were a few dents that were on the tabletop that I couldn't sand away, so I just grabbed some quick wood and filled them in. After it dried, I just grabbed some 220 grit sandpaper and hand sanded it until it was nice and smooth. Afterwards, you could see that little bit of area filled with quick wood that I might need to paint to match the stain later, but more to come on that. It was time to mix up the paint wash for this table. To get the restoration hardware look, I do a combination of a paint wash, I let it dry, and then I add a gel stain over top to act almost as a glaze. I do the paint wash to mainly remove that yellow tone of the wood, but I also feel like it gives a little bit of that rusticness look to the finish. And for the actual paint wash itself, I just used some beige paint that I had mixed up and added 60% water to the 40% paint. Before applying the paint wash, I just use a tack cloth to wipe off that excess dust. I use a regular paintbrush to apply the paint wash. I apply with the grain and in small sections at a time because the longer you leave it on, the less grain that will actually show through. So you can kind of determine how much grain you want and you can 
leave it on for as long or as little as you want. After the section is done, I just use a lint-free cloth and wipe back that extra whitewash paint. You can treat it almost as a stain. That's essentially what you're doing is applying a stain over the wood. So I apply it just as I would any other regular stain. I followed the same process to apply the whitewash to the tabletop. I wipe it on and I decided to actually do the entire table before wiping it off, but I realized that it was drying quicker than I wanted to, so I grabbed my mist spray bottle that just has water in it and sprayed it to keep the whitewash really wet so it wouldn't dry faster in certain sections. And when you're wiping back the white wash with your lint-free cloth, it's important to go with the grain. So you'll see that the edging there with the veneer has a different grain pattern than the rest of the table. So I had to kind of do that a little separately and it's a little bit of an art, but it's really not hard. And you can see side by side the comparison with whitewash on the right and without whitewash on the left and it really removes that yellow tone. Now you can leave it as is now and just seal the table if you like that white look or you can do what I did and went ahead and grabbed 320 grit sandpaper and a sanding block to sand it before adding a gel stain. I used aged oak whip by Minwax and it is a great brown color that really gives that restoration hardware look that I was going for. It's a great stain to use and I actually like using gel stain over the whitewash because you can control it a little bit easier. You can use an oil-based liquid stain over this too. It does not have to be gel stain. I just preferred to use this. I also highly recommend using gloves when applying this gel stain. I was out and it honestly took me forever to get the stain off my hands when I was done. So please don't be like me and use gloves. <laughs> to apply the gel stain, I just take a dab of it and put it on a lint-free cloth and wipe it in the direction of the grain. On this tabletop, I did find that I had excess gel stains, so I grabbed a lint-free cloth that I hadn't used before and just wiped it back like I would any other stain. And here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the gel stain over the whitewash on the left and just the whitewash on the right. I just love the warmth that that gel stain brings back into the wood. After the gel stain for about 48 hours, I used a tack cloth to wipe back any dust and then decided to seal it with a lacquer. I chose lacquer for the extra durability that it brings, especially for a tabletop, but I will say that I don't think that I would use this particular brand again. It did did spray a little unevenly and at one point I had to sand it back a little bit and respray. So it was a little finicky and probably wouldn't choose to use this one over again on another project. The can recommends doing a minimum of three coats. So I did three coats everywhere except the tabletop. I did an extra coat there just again for that extra durability that is needed with any type of table. And the table was finally done, but just a quick reminder of what it looked like when I bought it from Facebook Marketplace. It had a beautiful shape, but it just needed a refresh and it definitely got one. This table looks like it belongs in a magazine now. It's a beautiful brown with a perfect gray undertone that seriously gives me all those restoration hardware vibes. I'm gonna be selling this table locally through my Facebook Marketplace, as well as my Instagram account, where it will be sold to live on for many, many more years. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the look in the comments and if it's something you want to try out. As always, drop any questions you have below. Thanks again.